Hi, I'm Daphne and I'm here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals here in Chicago. So let's go take a look at some awesome cars. So you have all the creature comforts, yet you can uh, you have the horsepower to go to car shows, enjoy it on a daily basis, but it really turns people's heads. Usually 10,000 miles, okay. and all the options that you see are the options to the best of my knowledge that it was, when it came off the assembly line. This being a Hemi car was one of the last three two that were built. Wow. And being a late built, it has brush trim rings on it. The uh, car is originally from California, is where it was titled at, okay. and been in California most of its life. It's originally black with the red interior. Mm -hmm. um, I try, try to keep the car as much original as I can. Three, stripped mm -hmm. the paint, repainted it. Wow. We built the motor, trans. Mm -hmm. um, the interior is original. So we kept everything as original as we could. It's wonderful. I love when they show water. I know. I want to I wanna drive it home now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, can you tell me a little bit about the, the wheels here? The wheels are uh, a US mag. Uh, mm -hmm. It took me a little while to find something that was a steel wheel that is that is chrome. So how long have you had it for again? She bought it in 1972, 1972 so she's had it longer than she's had me. But it <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really cool. What attracted me to this car was obviously the black color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to find an original black 69 Camaro. They, they didn't make a lot of them. But it's a solid wheel without the trim ring. Okay. So it gives you a deeper dish and it gives you wider tires on it. And uh, so it handles a lot better. When you're driving, you know, the, you can it makes it look like there's you know light coming out of the hood um, but it also helps to kind of accentuate like what's under the engine compartment air conditioning lines the radiator hoses all these components everything on there is new old stock um, you just very hard to find those kind of parts these days I, I try to drive it as often as I can mm -hmm. um, I didn't build it to look at it I built it to drive it to me driving them is more of an excitement than yeah. just looking at it. So I see you have painted the hood of this car, or from a car. Mm -hmm. um, so the inspiration was the Cubs winning the World Series just true. recently. Yeah. This car actually has a Proteco plate. So it's actually a true 71 car. This actually car retains its original motor, transmission, rear end, carburetor, and distributor. Wow. Those are specific to this car. Hear about if anybody's laid eyes on it. Wow. Some guys are kind of weird like that. They won't let you look their stuff. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very, very nice. In fact, uh, a few weeks ago, we were down, the car was down at uh, Don Gowers' show in uh, Florida and finished uh, both on Saturday and Sunday best in class. Wow. So, I'm real proud of that. Hey, Dave. So, what did you bring here today? It's a 1970 Plymouth Sport Fury GT with a factory 446 barrel. Wow, it's beautiful. Muscle cars, anybody could go in and order one through the showroom mm -hmm. floor. You inspect it out, ordered it, and it mm -hmm. got delivered. Supercar actually had to be built by somebody. And Nikki okay. started that. They were the largest Chevy dealer in the world and based out of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, it's been sitting in stories for maybe uh, 10 to 12, 12 years. Okay. And uh, decided uh, about a year and a half ago to get it out and take it from a 169,000 wore out car to uh, what you see today. I. Uh, Found the car in a uh, actually it's near Staunton, Illinois, okay. in a uh, almost a field. We brought a recently finished '69 Charger I built for a client in Michigan. Uh, kind of a nostalgia, a little bit of a nostalgia story uh, involved with the build. Wow! So was this the original? I uh, know the original. The, the original color was white. It was a. It is a pace car because uh, okay. the original engine was a 396 turbojet. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Daphne, and today I'm here with... Uh, Dave Saruk. All right, Dave, what type of car did you bring to the show today? Well, we brought a uh, good old Plymouth Superbird. Awesome. So can you give me a little bit of history on the car, like how long you've had it? And I've had the car for uh, about six, seven years now. Oh, wow. And uh, the car was actually not bought new, not far from you in Iowa. Okay. Um, the fellow there, actually, these Superbirds, you're kind of used to seeing them going on ovals fast. But the uh, the owner actually took it on the quarter mile. And uh, in 71, he actually won a pretty substantial championship. I was over at Cordova, which is in uh, Iowa. And he actually won the World Series uh, drag racing class oh, wow. with this car in 71. So that was kind of neat uh, yeah. accomplishment for a car that's supposed to be going around circles. So it, right. uh, you know, it was a quarter mile <laughs> car. So that was kind of neat. And uh, then it moved around a little bit. Uh, it actually came back in Canada briefly, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a Canadian owner that had it for a while, but it went down to Florida and hung out there for a few years, and then it actually got parked for oh, probably 25 years. Wow. Uh, it's only got 32,000 miles on it, so it's a low mileage car. Wow, uh, and great. it got treated well there, so uh, so when I had got it, it had already been, had one repaint early in its days, just, you know, maybe scratches or something like that. and. Okay. Uh, but we took it totally apart and restored it and made it into what it is now. Wow. So how long did it take for you to, to restore everything on the it car? Was, uh, it, was, it was a couple of years, you know, uh, okay. all the work you had to put in the detail. I had a fellow named Dave mm -hmm. West out of uh, Langley, okay. British Columbia. He did all the hard work, so you can see it was a fabulous job he did. Wow, he did a great job. So what um, color paint is this? It's called Lemon Twist. Lemon Twist? Lemon Twist. Oh, it's Y2. Nice so, uh, you know, Mopar had a lot of interesting names with their cars so mm -hmm. uh, this one's called lemon twist and uh it's being it's a hemi so uh you know it's uh it's mm -hmm. fun that way uh they made i guess total somewhere around like 135 superbirds wow uh, and then they made 58 four speeds so within mopars you know it's all kind of about uh how many they're out there so of the 58 they made four with uh bucket seats or uh, yeah fourth bucket seats three with console so it's a non-console four speed uh, you know, car. So there's three of them, three of them built wow. for this desire. And then the, uh, and again, it's great. Somehow with all his racing days, mm -hmm. the original motor survived. It's original transmission. Uh, you can see broadcast sheet, and I've got paperwork on it. So it's, it's got all the good things going for it. And like I'm saying we uh, spent a lot of time. I, Dave, the restoration guy, is very uh, detail oriented. So there's a lot of stuff that's been brought back to this car that was from the day. And again, we started such a great car. Mm -hmm. We were able to, you know, document all the. Uh, all the details and just replicate them when oh, we went to do awesome. the car. That's great. Let's walk around and take a look under the hood. So can you tell me a little bit more about the engine? Well, again, the engine, as I said, it's the original engine of the car, uh, 426 Hemi. Um, the, a lot of different <laughs> detailing with them. You know, the Superbirds are a little different. You know, with this fender tag, obviously, this is, a, this is the tag that gives you all the information on what the car uh, was built with. It's, you know, okay. it tells you about the four speed, it tells you it's a super track pack car. Mm -hmm. It tells you, you know, whatever options were put on the car and you can match that to the broadcast sheet, which is the ultimate piece of paper they had on the assembly line. When they're traveling down the line, the other guys would say, okay, what color, uh, what do we need, what mm -hmm. kind of seats, is it bucket? So they would use that as their shopping list for Mopar parts and nice. build the car off that. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> So and then with the thing with the uh, the Mopars is again as you know there's everything is so uh, date coded. Mm -hmm. It's got a stamp on everything that says it's with the car. So you know you'll find stamps on the windshield washer, uh, the wiper motor says exactly the date when it was built. You'll mm -hmm. find it on the rod. You'll find it even on the washer bottle. Wow. It's got a little plastic number on there that says exactly the day it was built. Even the word motor, the plastic motor below, mm -hmm. has a, a number heated up and stamped into the motor. That's exactly, you know, typically built three months before the car. Wow, that is really cool. So that's the thing about Mopar, so it takes some time mm -hmm. to get the restoration down because you hope you've got all those parts. If you're not, then you've got to do a little hunting to find not only the part, you've got to find the part mm -hmm. that is date coded correct for the car. Wow, very nice. Yeah. So what, um, can you tell me a little bit about the wheels? Well, these are typical wheel, well, not the typical wheels, a lot of variations of uh, wheels you could get. But these are the rally wheels. Okay. Um, and a little interesting again, just more detail about the Superbirds. Mm -hmm. Typically in 1970, the Superbird, like a lot of 1970 cars had mm -hmm. a chrome shiny surface mm -hmm. in the earlier ones, but mm -hmm. depending on when this car was built, and this car was built late 
out of they built 1920 in total that includes the four, four 440 cars automatics and four speeds this being a hemi car was one of the last three two that were built wow and being a late built it has brush trim rings on it oh wow so you go in the broadcast sheet and it tells you mm -hmm. uh, that's what that, that's what belongs on this car wow it's really cool yeah funky awesome. detail so and there's you know, again, some of the other details you can see if you look underneath the car. You can see all the, because what these cars did, they took them in a big tank and they picked them up by the roof mm -hmm. and they dragged them into deep tank and wow. lifted them out of tank to put primer throughout all the body areas. Wow. So you can see here, we've got runs right there. We replicated runs hanging off the car because it would have been wet when it came out of the tank so all the low points would have been dangling so we went back and put all those runs in there oh, and that's why you see the dark you see the dark primer and then when they sprayed the car mm -hmm. you'd always get overspray shooting in there so that's when you see a bit of the yellow wow. onto the body and <laughs> that is really really awesome so there is so many details and you know the welding was horrible but that's just the way they did it back then <laughs> you know we replicated that and so those dip lines we've gone throughout the car everywhere mm -hmm. uh, you know you can look in the cracks of the of the cars and we painted the car all together just in fact we would have done it oh wow the doors were on it a lot of people sometimes they take the doors off and they try and you know make them shiny but this car we painted it all together with single stage paint as they did in the factory mm -hmm. so it's Someone see in here, you shine the light, you'll see a little dip line in there. Please, we have dip please, lines please subscribe. behind the doors also that show all the uh, information. I'll just grab the. So there's some of the information. Nothing in the car was in Florida. But if you look here, you'll see this is a door panel over there that we took off, and that's that dip line. Wow. Because the car was down into the tank and you can see it, you know, you can kind of see it back there too. Right. And that number was in behind the door panel. So wow. we took a picture of it and we replicated the same shape and stuck it back on there. Wow. And we've got details like that all over the car. You know, inside the bell housing, you were never going to see it. There's a number 16. Not sure what it was for, wow. <laughs> but we wrote number 16 in the bell housing before we bolted it back together because it was there. So some real details, and this thing, even the same thing, you go under the dash, there's a little metal piece that holds the steering column. Well, this dip primer hit that, so there's a little three-quarter inch band of dip primer we put back on the steering column brace just because it was there. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah, a lot of funky details, you know, yeah. interesting details, but they just had them. That's nice, yeah. Work hard at that. Another example of date codes. That is another date code there. It tells you, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not remembering my date code reading on seat belts, but again, the numbers there represent back in the year, back in 69 when it was built. Wow, that's you, pretty cool. the door sticker. Right mean, there's the original door sticker. Wow. So we, we <laughs> taped around it and left it, so you can see 12 is when the car was there, finally done. Just put the sticker on there and, uh, Try and send it to the owner. Very cool. Very very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's just details hiding everywhere. I can, I, you know, you yeah. can go on. You can see. And again, these cars were road runners. Mm -hmm. They made it a Superbirds. Wow. And so originally the back windows were sloped down. So wow. just to get their arrow, you know, speed up. That's why they, you know, mm -hmm. they, they they got so fast on the track. They welded these windows in to road runners. Wow. So you can see a little dip, you left a little dip in the roof here. Because mm -hmm. right? that's where the body work, that's all again from the factory. Wow. So speaking of the track, have you ever taken this to the track at all? No, the only track this is seen is from that corner to this corner. Okay. Again, <laughs> we just finished it uh, 5 o'clock last Monday and I loaded it in wow. the trailer. So wow. we've just got it done, so we haven't had time to go out there and enjoy it yet. But oh, we will. okay, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's all this stuff. We, cool. I know these, these wings are aluminum. So they were kind of a cast aluminum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you look in here, you'll see lines, brush, you'll see the original scratch marks wow. from the factory. So we just make sure we didn't sand those out when we built it, because we wanted to retain, you know, exactly the way it was. And you'll see all kinds of little imperfections in there and mm -hmm. holes and dips and stuff like that. Again, we wow. didn't put any filler there because we wanted to make sure that's the way it was done. Right. That is really neat. Any uh, future projects that you have? Oh, we've got a couple more coming. 
Yeah, I'm working on a, uh, I've also got a uh, Daytona, which is again the Dodge version of the wing cars, and they were the first built. They were more, a little bit more of a raw built, because they were built by Creative Industries, was a subcontractor that did all the work for them, put the nose and the wings on. That was in 69, this was 70, the Plymouth started doing these in the factory, but I've got also a uh, Daytona that'll be uh, coming up next, and it's uh, again a rear, interesting car because it's black. They only made, well, they made 503 Daytonas in total, uh, and they made supposedly nine black ones. Wow. And this is black with a red interior. Oh, wow. So they only made two with a red interior, so uh, oh, that'll that's be one of the next cool. ones we'll bring out here, which is kind of a fun car. Well, that'll be really neat. Yeah, so it's going to be <laughs> nice sitting beside this one. Wow, this is beautiful. Uh, thanks. Beautiful car and... Yeah, just interesting, really a lot of interesting detail was yeah. built into it. I say, like, you know, uh, Dave West, fabulous job okay. catching the details, you know. Mm -hmm. Small little detail again here, just the, the roughness. The judges were actually asking me about this when we were going around scoring points on it. Oh, okay. So they, they saw this filler and they said, what did you do there? It looks like you forgot to take off the undercoating and paint it over. It's like, no. When this was put on, they would squeeze these panels together, they would put filler in here, they would squeeze them. Well, this stuff came oozing out of the joint. Mm -hmm. They'd smear that over. Wow. Keep it. So we left it there. We went, we, mm -hmm. uh, we saw some survivors and we saw it on there. So we said, you know, it's, they're supposed to be on these cars. So again, we replicated that wow, detail. Wow, that is really cool. It's nice that you kept everything, yeah, like every well, little a, detail. It's a, you know, it's a great car. It's. Uh, and it's fun for everybody else now. They can come by here and take a look at you know, reference right, to it, and you know, right. to, to, to put that much effort to get it back to being from the factory. Is you know, it's that's exciting for everybody. You know, it's a great car for me to own, and it's a great car to you know share with others. So uh, I'm pretty happy about it. Again, <laughs> coming to events like this, there's just so many great people here. Yeah. Uh, they put on a fabulous, fabulous event here. Uh, you know, Roy. So uh, we're mm -hmm. glad to be invited to come here, and we like to bring something that we can share with everybody else. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your car with us and letting us interview you. Great. And um, you can check out the video on YouTube. It's I'll called U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. Great. Well, thank you okay. Very much. Thank nice, you so nice much. You, you too. Thank okay. you. Okay. U.S. Classic Muscle Cars thanks you for watching our videos. <laughs> Hi, everyone is welcome to share the videos on their Facebook page and please make sure to check out the Patreon website and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel US Plastic Muscle Cars. Please, please, please subscribe. We appreciate it.